Hey guys, well today I thought we'd take a look at this Ego uh, Power Plus Nexus Escape, the 150 watt inverter. I know lots of people have already talked about these online. I've looked at a little bit of the videos myself and for me personally, I think I even mentioned in one video in the past about the 150 watt really didn't seem like a good idea to me. I didn't think I'd be buying one. Well, with the clearance rack and down to $69, I got to thinking about it a little bit more. And then I finally pulled the trigger at $69 and I said, you know what? I'm going to get one. And even though at 150 watts max even, you know, that's, that's not, um, that's not with a higher surge rating or anything. That's just, a just says 150 watt max. That's not a whole lot you can do with it. But still, I have to admit, if you can get it for 69 bucks, I, mean, I still think there's some things we can find uh, find it useful for. So today, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to see if I can find um, something something useful to do with this thing. We also got the manual and the warranty information here. One thing about the manual, I looked through it here for a few minutes. I want to point out anything interesting in the manual. Um, one thing, there might be other videos talking about this, but the 5 volts actually gives you 4.2 amps on the USB uh, charging ports and that's that's actually really really good so even though the 150 watts isn't a whole lot of use for the 120 volt stuff that's actually pretty useful for the money itself um, during a power outage being able to use my my Ego 56 volt batteries I just got a repaired uh, Ego battery here I don't even I pulled it out of a blower I'm not sure it's above 15 percent but that's about all I know we'll see how it does on a test here it also mentions here that devices intended for indoor use only do not use outdoors under any conditions. And that's that's really, really surprising because, I mean, after all, it's, it's called a escape, right? Yeah, Nexus Escape. You're not using outdoors. I don't know what you're escaping, but anyway. Okay, so we'll find some indoor portable uses for it. One thing uh, worth mentioning about the manual also, something with the CSA here or Canadian Standards Association. It looks like they, on the manual printed, if you can see that, there was a C in the left corner and US in the right corner, and they, they put a sticker over the CSA, and of course they had to do it on all the different languages. I pulled this one up. You can see it had a C and a US, and they definitely put the sticker on that. It just shows US, I guess US standards approved there. Showing that it just passed the uh, um, U.S. certified standards only. I'm not. I'm not sure about that. Anyway, I thought that was interesting. They also did the same thing to the bottom of the box, where it had the C in the U.S. and the sticker just says U.S. So, any of you Canadian friends, I wonder if y'all has a different sticker. Anyway, moving right along with the PAD1500, I'm going to go ahead and plug it in. I do like the handle. It's kind of got a weird center of gravity about it, but nevertheless, it is easy to carry. Makes it very, very portable and it folds out of the way pretty nice. I do actually like that a lot. Well, that's odd. When I push the button, the green light comes on the battery like it picked up. But man, I got to push really, really hard. It's like it's a two stage button here. Anyway, that's a pretty hard button to push. If you can see that the green light is on, I'm going to plug in. A kilowatt LCD meter here you can see that voltage is good frequency is good I'm gonna back this out so I can hook up a, just a portable oscilloscope right quick Let me right back instead of getting out my mains oscilloscope I just want to throw up this uh, portable battery powered up uh, my old Veilman my actual first digital oscilloscope so let's cut that on and Wow that is very square. So we show it at the times 10 probe here set up. We show on 125 or so AC volts, five milliseconds per division, which you can't see the divisions on camera, I know. But we see that we have a very, very um, square wave here. It's not even a modified sine wave at all. It doesn't step much at all. So I really wouldn't use this on a lot of things. It took probably switch mode power supplies unless the input caps really has some good smoothing or some good um, PTC, some soft starting. I'm going to do some tests with some chargers. I guess it's got a timeout on it. Mine just cut off. 
yeah my battery's still good so it just timed out and cut off but that's interesting the next thing i wanted to do is um go through a test of some of my battery chargers say you had a 7.5 amp hour ego battery and you actually want to use this during a power outage to charge up your milwaukee or makita Ryobi stuff maybe you wanted to take your bigger batteries and charge up something and the only reason i would see you say you want to do that is maybe you have some better flashlights and stuff already capable of taking those batteries to some degree this capacity to charge up several smaller capacity batteries well none of the um battery chargers i have really like this 150 watt inverter we saw the square wave i started videoing um testing these chargers but it, it'll take a lot of time so i just wanted to tell you that i had several different chargers i tested the only ones that seemed to power up and try to charge okay was my dewalt uh, dcb 113 it says this around 1.2 amp input and that's really really close to this rating of course but i guess it did have some um, ptcs and the input capacitance didn't seem to draw on it and kick it off right away also my milwaukee combo charger the 48-59-1812 even though it says it can be up to 2.1 amps it seemed to charge my small pack pretty well and it didn't shut down it actually powered up and it did fine i would imagine the milwaukee having two batteries charging at the same time because this is a combo charger so probably an 18 and a 12, you probably wouldn't be able to do it. And maybe even your higher capacity 18, it might give it some trouble. My rigid is a 110 watt uh, rigid 18 volt charger. It is a R840093. It would not start up. My Ryobi P113, 85 watts only, but it would not charge up. My, my Makita DC18RA says up to 240 watts and it definitely would not even power it with no battery in it so just to let you know about charging other batteries that would really be uh, hit or miss with this so and i don't know how well those chargers like the square wave even the ones that did seemingly okay um charging so the other thing i thought about with this is i like i really like cordless soldering iron so some of y'all may have seen a video i did in the last year or so where I got this M12 soldering iron, and even though it don't last very long, it's a good portable way to be able to solder something in the field without having to use gas or butane. But anything bigger than this, I've always had to use butane. Well, this right here does actually change that. So the one reason I wanted to buy it and I wanted to do this video is I have this Weller soldering iron that I use on my bigger stuff, and I use it a lot. And now let me go ahead and tell you, this is the Weller 140 or 100 watt universal. So sometimes I say, let me get my 200 watt iron. And I'm talking about this one, but this is, this is truly not a 200 watt iron. I just used to have one that was 200 watts years ago. And I just still in my mind, when I say I'm going to grab my 200 watt iron, I'm grabbing this one. So this is the one that I happen to have. I've had this thing for years now even though it's a newer version of the Weller. So I want to make sure I point out that it's a 140 or 100 watt version that pulls 1.2 amps. And so this is kind of what I had in mind using this for. And if we go to our watts here, it's our watts. Does it work? drum roll yes it does it starts up slow i like that so it's kind of got a soft start up to it hits a peak and drops off as it heats up so that is a go for the cordless 140 watt iron and i am tickled to death about that for my 69 dollars i'm gonna tell you because uh I use this iron or one like it a lot. And um, I'd love to be able to just take this with me with a handle. You know what I mean? Just take it. I can go. And actually it'll work for a good little while too. I like that. Well, how well is it working? Ooh, I can see the smoke. Love it. 60 hertz amps and watts 
you hear the fan come on and So even though I didn't come up with a whole lot of uses for the 150 watt inverter, for my soldering irons alone, I'm really, really liking it. So I'm glad I purchased it. It's going to be great to have. I can just take this with me and I don't have to worry about extension cords. Some places that don't have, you know, readily available uh, outlets. So I really, really like that. I will tell you, I also hooked up my Heiko, the FX888D Heiko. So it does have a digital display on it. It did run it, but it was a bit noisy, I think, because of that square wave, of course. You could just hear that hum from that square wave, but it did work. I mean, it. my soldering irons, uh, the two that I would love to have portable, they both did work with this. Um, this one's probably the only one I feel real comfortable with it, not, you know, with the square wave not affecting it. Um, the Heiko, just with that, that hum, I didn't feel comfortable about it, but it, it did run it. Um, it's come with the temperature and hell temperature. The display worked. So, but I hope you like this brief look into this Nexus 150 watt inverter. And just uh, a few of the uses for it, including, you know, uh, small lights, especially LED lights and things of that nature. Uh, some work with it, some don't, but still it can be a, it can still be great to have when you don't have power uh, for charging your cell phones and, uh, and great for some portable things. Uh, does have its limits but um if you can find one for 69 bucks i would definitely say go for it hope you like the video today please like share subscribe and thanks for watching